Yes. Um, the argument's been made that the operant model is deficient because it explains how we modify behavior, and yet it doesn't explain where some of the behaviors in the individual's repertoire come from and um, why certain things are reinforcers. But I think all conditioning goes on only because the human organism has the, the capacities it has to be reinforced by various things. It is, able, it is able to respond to reinforcement by changing its behavior and so on. And that's all part of its genetic endowment. It's what, what it comes with, with the baby. The baby is a member of the human species and as such shows all of the effects of the evolution of that species. It's been terribly important to the human species to be strongly reinforced by sweets, for example, because at the time when there was famine, pestilence, and so on, it was very important to get food. Same thing is true of sex at a time when the human race was decimated by pestilence and so on. It was very important that everyone copulated every opportunity. So sex is a terribly reinforcing thing. But now, uh, with, con with controls um, for, for of famine, pestilence, and all of that kind of thing, we are overpopulating the earth. It's just, it's just too reinforcing for the current needs of the species. Now, the individual is not going to be just the human species. He will have in individual features. If you want to know what reinforces a person, try him out. That's the only definition we have anyway of a reinforcer. Do you think it's possible for an individual to use operant techniques to control his own behavior? control his own behavior. I don't believe that you ever control yourself by willpower or by going, mm, and doing the right thing. I think you do have to change the world in which you live. You do change it when, for example, you, uh, if, if you pretend to, to eat too much, you stay away from food at least. That is some help in, in preventing this constant uh, eating behavior, which is getting you into trouble. You can change the deprivation level. If uh, you have friends who like to ply you at a cocktail party, drink a great deal of water before you go, because part of the drinking is mere thirst quenching. And if you can reduce that part of it, then you are in a much better position to turn down a third or fourth cocktail. And so, yeah. Can you give me an example of any behavior that you don't think that you could condition? I, well, I think it'd be very hard to say. That's a very general statement. And uh, to say, no, there is none, would be a very foolish thing to say. But I don't know of any particular kind. Many people say, well, but they're creative acts. The, the artist is doing something absolutely new. You can't teach a person to behave in an original way. It wouldn't be original if you taught him. But you can teach him to do the kinds of things which make accidents most likely and make other sources of originality more effective. I, I did a, a lecture at the Guggenheim some time ago on uh, creating the creative artist. It's very Philistine, I'm sure, so far as the people at the Guggenheim uh, went. But I went into the kinds of things that we can do and that artists can do to maximize the probability that they will do absolutely original things but you can reinforce the kinds of things which lead an individual to behave in, orig in an original way. And of course, he then gets reinforced for it. The artist fiddles around with paint, putting it on, putting it on in a different way until it's something, something happens that's reinforcing. What do you think should be the role of operant techniques in dealing with human psychopathology? A great many neurotic symptoms typically are learned behaviors. They are learned from the environment, not because of in any innate, uh, deep inside disorder and you change the environment to change the symptom, if you want to call it a symptom, but I don't. That's one of the troubles with the whole, uh, whole mentalistic philosophy is that it makes behavior into a symptom rather than into the, the very thing we're, we're interested in. The, the, uh, the underlying disorder was the Freudian extrapolation of a medical analogy. A, a repressed wish is like a tumor, and you've got to get in there and dig it out or you'll be in trouble. But that, we don't need that formulation, and it doesn't really work. How does one go about getting a, sort of a general population adjusted to the idea of operant conditioning? It's undoubtedly true that uh, what we might call the literature of freedom has uh, aggrandized the individual. You, you are free. Your values are the only values. And anyone who wants to change them is your enemy and so on. Well, I think we are in real trouble because uh, the whole notion of individual freedom is miscarrying very badly and is doing great damage to the individual. I, I think, to put it very, uh, in very broad terms, I think what a culture does for the individual 
is to bring him under the control of the remoter consequences of his behavior. What, what will happen 10 years from now because of what he does today. And if he then rejects the culture and said, I am the authority as to what I am going to do today, he loses contact with, with the future. I think the great danger in America right now is that we are not behaving with respect to the remoter consequences of our behavior. And other cultures are, and uh, that could be a very serious thing.